14-carat, 17-jewel timepiece. And that's only right, because the man I'm giving it to is a 14-carat, 17-jewel cashier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pass it along to him, boys. Oh, that's a beautiful watch, J.J. Oh, wonderful. Isn't that beautiful watch. This? Read what's engraved inside, Chris. To my friend, Christopher Cross. In token of 25 years of faithful service from J.J. Hogarth, 1909-1934. Speed! Speed! Speak up, Chris! Speak up! Come on, Chris! Speed! Well, I, uh... I, I hardly know what to say, J.J. This, uh... Why, it, it's beautiful. I, I never expected to own a watch like this. <laughs> no, sir, I... Well, all I can say is that uh, we've got the best boss in New York. <laughs> for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, when nobody can deny. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Chris, I'm Congratulations, old boy, congratulations. Good boy, good boy. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, my old friend. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a smoke before I go. Well, I, 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 I don't usually, J.J. Go ahead and try it. Made special for me. Dollar piece. Here, Charlie. Oh, thanks. Thank you. You're not superstitious, are you, Chris? No, 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 sir, no. Now, don't break up a good party just because I've got to go. Everything is charged to J.J. Oh, so drink all you want. Only, don't come in late Monday morning with a hangover. Oh, don't worry, we won't. We'll be right there on time. Well, good night, boys. Good night, boys. Good night, Let's see that one. That's an beautiful Oh, why aren't you out? I'll try to do this for the rest of the time. I'll bet you. I didn't expect you to own anything. Hey, fellas, look! Look! Come here! Hurry! Get a load of that dame! That's J.J.'s wife? <laughs> <laughs> the boss is stepping out. <laughs> say, if I had to do you thought I'd step out too. I'd be all in laundry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nothing like the smell of spring. Which way do you go, Chris? Well, I guess I'll take the east side subway. Gets me to Brooklyn a little quicker. Hey, you, you haven't got an umbrella. No, I'll take you to your bus. Oh, no, no, that's out of your way. Oh, well, I don't mind walking, you know, fresh air, spring. <laughs> hey, I'm a little drunk. <laughs> I'll catch the next one. You go on over to the subway. Oh, I don't mind waiting. I, I feel kind of lonely tonight. Say, uh, Charlie, uh, 
Do you suppose J.J. is running around with that young lady? It looks that way. I, I, I wonder what it's like. What, Chris? Well, to be, to be loved by a young girl like that. You know, nobody ever looked at me like that. Not even when I was young. Yes, when we're young, we have dreams that never pan out, but we go on dreaming. When I was young, I wanted to be an artist. You know, I dreamt I was going to be a great painter someday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a cashier. Do you still paint? Yeah, every Sunday. Well, that's one way to kill time. You know, Sunday's one day of the week that I don't like. I never know what to do with myself. Well, why don't you come over tomorrow and see me? Thanks, Chris. I'll do that. Good night, Chris. Uh, good night, Charlie. Uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, good night. Yeah, half hour ago. So, uh, which way is it to the east side subway? Round the corner, past the L, four blocks. Oh, thank you, officer. I guess I got turned around. These streets are all mixed up from Greenwich Village. Yeah. <laughs> Is he hurt? I'll go call a policeman. No, wait! Wait! What does he look like? I don't know. I didn't see his face. He took $15. He didn't believe it was all I had, so he began pushing me around. And this gentleman ran in and knocked him down. Right. That's right, officer. He, he was right there. I couldn't hold him. He got up and ran. Wait here. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, we have to wait for the officer. I don't want to get my name in the newspaper. Do you? With the newspaper? Sure. We'll have to go down to the station house and make a complaint. And every time they make an arrest, they send detectives to your house for weeks. Oh, it's a nuisance. Hmm. Won't you take me home? Why, yes. Uh, well, uh, sure, that is it. Uh, well, if you think that... Uh... Well, here's where I live. Oh, I'm uh, sorry I can't ask you to come up, but uh, I share my apartment with another girl, Millie. Good night, and thanks for everything. Uh, don't you, uh, uh, don't you want a cup of coffee? All right. Oh, this is Mr. Uh... Cross. Glad to know you, Mr. Cross. Oh, uh, how do you do? You seen Johnny? Uh, no, not uh, since he left here. Uh, two coffees, please. Oh, I think I'll change my mind. I could stand a drink. A rum cullen. One rum cullen? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, come on. Keep me company. Well, uh, uh, make mine the same. Ever since I first saw you, I... I was wondering what your name was. Kitty. It's really... Ca <coughs> Catherine. Catherine March. My friends call me Kitty. <laughs> what do your friends call you? Uh, Chris. Chris Cross. Chris Cross? <laughs> yes, the boy teased me about it, but uh, uh, I don't mind. Why 
are you looking at? Is my face dirty? I'll bet it is. I'm old enough to be your father. I'll you're not so old. You don't think so? Well, you're not a boy. You're just uh, mature. I like mature people. Well, what I wanted to say was, uh, you shouldn't be alone in the street so late at night. I was coming home from work. You work this late? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Guess. You're an actress. Oh, you are clever. Now that you know all about me, tell me about yourself. What do you do? I? I, uh... uh well, you see... No, no, don't tell me. You work in a bank? <laughs> no. Well, let's see. Greenwich Village is full of artists. I meet you in Greenwich Village. You must be an artist, right? Well, I, uh... Yes, yes, I, I paint. Of course, you're a painter. I love painting. To think I took you for a cashier. Mm -hmm. You know those art galleries on Fifth Avenue? The prices they charge. I saw one little picture that cost $50,000. They called it a... a Cezanne. Cezanne. Oh, he was a great French painter. I like to own that painting. You would? Mm-hmm. $50,000? Well, you, you can't put any price on masterpieces like that. They're worth, uh, well, whatever you can afford to pay for them. You know what, Chris? I bet I saw some of your pictures there and didn't know it. Next time, I'll look for your name. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, um, I, 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 I don't sell my pictures. Well, not in New York, you mean. No, I... Uh... I know. I bet you sell your pictures in Europe, France, or someplace like that. Tell I don't know much about painting. I bet you get as much for your pictures in France as those Frenchmen get right here in New York. Mm -hmm. And you're never appreciated in your own country. Well, that, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> but you know, when I paint, uh, uh, I don't think of money. I, I just paint for fun. Fun? Yes, I think it's the most fun I know, painting. I wish I had all the time to paint. But don't you have time? Oh, no. Uh, well, you, yes. Uh, you see, I... Uh, uh, well, you know, business takes a lot of time. No wonder when you get all that money. Yeah. Well, um, uh, what what play are you acting in? It closed tonight. Which one? The one I was in. What time is it? Oh. Uh... It's only ten past two. Only? Oh, it's time for Kitty to be in bed. <sighs> So you won't forget me. Thank you. Can I see you again? Oh, sure, sometime. Well, if you'll give me your telephone number. I haven't got a phone. Well, may I write you? That's the address. Good night, Chris. Kitty, who's Johnny? Why do you ask that? Well, I, I just heard you ask the bartender. Oh, oh, sure, he's just a fellow I know. He's uh, Millie's boyfriend. You know, the girl I live with. Good night, Chris. Good night, Kitty. Well, well, this is a 
pleasure. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you, Charlie. But, Chris, you asked me. My wife. Well, it's, uh, it's good to see you anyway. <laughs> Hey, uh, that was a swell party last night, wasn't it, Charlie? Uh, say, uh, what time would we go home? Uh, after midnight, wasn't it? You know, I haven't been to bed yet. You haven't? I guess I'm not as old as I thought I was, eh, Charlie? No, no. <laughs> oh, I've got to do the dishes for Adele. Uh, you don't mind, Charlie, do you? No, 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 no. Go right ahead. Uh, did you paint this? Great Scott, no. That isn't painting, that's mud. Done by a photographer. Who is it? The, uh, late departed. Oh, your wife's former husband. Detective Sergeant Higgins. Homer Higgins. Say, that's a real medal, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Adele got it. Your wife? Yeah. After he was drowned in the East River. Jumped in to save a woman. Neither body was found. Oh. Too bad. Yeah. Too bad. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Right. So. <coughs> How long have you been married, Chris? Five years. Well, now, she uh, didn't want to spend his insurance money, and so she rented out the spare room. Twenty-four dollars a week. Well, I was trying to save money to buy paints, and so I moved in. Oh, she was sweet. Thought I wouldn't belt in her mouth. And, uh, well, you know how these things go. <laughs> Smoke? Oh. Where are your paintings, Chris? Uh, they're out in the hall. Uh, would you like to see what I did today? Yes, I'd like to. <laughs> Where did you find the... Uh... A flower like that. Hmm. You mean, you see this when you look at that? Well, yes. Uh, that is, I, I, I sort of feel it. Uh, you see, when I look at that flower, I see someone... Is there anything private in this house? Uh, I'm sorry, Adele. We better get out of here. to get those lazy legs off that couch, baby? Come here. Can't you do any better than that? That's all you think about, lazy legs, hmm? What else is there to think about? If you want more heat in this apartment, miss, you'll have to call a janitor. <laughs> you idiot. How come you're holding out on me, baby? Oh, Stop talking about Saturday night. I'm not talking about Saturday night. I'm talking about this. Sounds like a schoolboy trying to make a date. You must be robbing the cradle. <laughs> What's so funny? You are. He's old enough to be my father. That's the old fellow who came to my rescue Saturday night. My hero. No kidding. See? 
You were too tight to remember anything. If I hadn't told the cop to go in the wrong direction, he'd have picked you up. This your fellow who butted in? Mm -hmm. The painter? He's rich and famous and very sweet, too, Johnny. He doesn't pull any rough stuff like you. Well, I had a chance to clean up in a crap game. All I needed was 50 bucks. And what did you show up with? 15, for cat's sake. That's all I had. Besides, you kept me waiting two hours in the rain. And then you gave me a dirty look. I didn't give you a dirty look. Listen, any girl who waits two hours in the rain for a guy is gonna give him a dirty look. <sighs> Trouble with you, baby, is you have no imagination. What do you expect me to do? I expect you to use your brains. But for cat's sake, this chump is crazy about you. This is a setup. He's in the big money, isn't he? You said 50,000 a picture, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Now here I am, knocking my brains out, trying to raise a little capital, and this is right in your lap. You don't have to call uh, what's-his-name and get a measly 50. This bird is goofy about you. Write him. Date him up. Oh, I can't take money off an old man like that. For cat's sake, get big-hearted and smart, lazy legs. Why well, see fellas in the big door without half my brains? But ability isn't enough. You gotta have money to make money. Capital. But the boys at the Acme Garage have cut me in on a half interest if I can put up the money. How much do they want? Oh, three or four thousand. Yikes. Well, for cat's sake, I'm not talking about chicken feed. Use your imagination. You get an interest in a business like that, and it's a cinch to squeeze out your partner. Then you're on easy street. Jeepers, the pipe dreams you have. Now, what about the letter? Oh, I can get 50 or 100, perhaps, but I can't get the kind of money you're talking about. I wouldn't know how. Ah. Uh. Johnny? Johnny, where are you going? Well, I won't be wasting my time. Johnny? Johnny? Oh, I don't know why I'm so crazy about you. Oh, yes, you do. Now, what about my proposition? You don't have to tap the old chump for much, not at first. We'll get you a decent apartment, someplace where I like to come and see you, not a dump like this. Well, lazy legs? May I come into my own apartment? Hello, funny face. Why don't you just move in, Johnny, then I can move out. Now, Millie, stop picking on my fiance. How do you spell that word? With an F, like in funny face. She pays half the rent, doesn't she? Well, that was a general idea, Big Shop, and we signed the lease. Well, I don't mind if you want this place to yourself. Do you, baby? What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. You know Johnny. Yeah, I know Johnny, all right. Has he bought you that engagement ring yet? Oh, you seem to worry more about it than I do. The new $45 model. Oh, Rogers let me have it for 18. Said he'd be a profit at that. I thought you were modeling girdles for the catalog. I have been. Oh. I ache like a dog. Of course it's ever come back. I swear I'll quit modeling. <clears throat> Why don't you go back to work? That figure. You weren't so darn lazy. Who do you think you are? My guardian angel? Not me, honey. I lost those wings a long time ago. Mm, that's what I thought. No wonder you got fired so darn snippy. You never could get to work on time after you met that Johnny. Honey, what's happened to you? Don't you wish it could happen to you? I'm in love, crazy in love. With a man that pushes you around the way I wouldn't push a cat around. You leave Johnny out of this. But you're not the figure you could get any man you want. Sure. But there's only one I want. Yeah, and he's making a trap out of you. You wouldn't know love if it hit you in the face. If that's where it hits you, you ought to know.
that robin seemed just like I feel. Hey, look, there's a pair of them up there. They're building their nest. Say, where'd you learn that? Oh, <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I bet I haven't done that in 40 years. Yeah, I, I feel like a kid myself today. Sold any pictures lately? Mm -hmm. Why don't you paint my picture? I'd like to. Could I bring my easel to your apartment? Oh, I'm afraid my girlfriend wouldn't like that. How long does it take you to paint a picture? Well, uh, sometimes a day, sometimes a year. You can't tell. It has to grow. I never knew paint could grow. Well, feeling grows. You know, that's the important thing, feeling. Well, now, you take me. Well, nobody ever taught me how to draw, so I just put a line around what I feel when I look at things. Yeah, I see. It's like... Uh, it's like falling in love, I guess. You know, first you see someone and then it keeps growing and until you can't think of anyone else. That's interesting. Well, the way I look at things, that's all art is. Every painting, if it's any good, is a love affair. I never heard anyone talk like that before. Oh, well, uh, there aren't many people you can talk to this way. So you keep it to yourself. You walk around with everything bottled up. Yeah, that's right. That's the way it is with me, too. I'm sort of keeping things bottled up, too, Chris. The truth is, I'm in a jam. You, Kitty? Oh, you probably guessed it. I'm broke. Even this dress belongs to Millie. I can't pay my rent. Uh, well, how much is it? Oh, forget it. I shouldn't have told you. Day. Oh, but Kitty... I'll get out of it somehow. I couldn't take anything from you, Chris. No. Uh, yes, I, I mean... No, no, I couldn't. I've never taken money from a man, and I'm not going to now. And I'm not going to spoil our friendship. Oh, but Kitty, uh... I couldn't pay you back. Oh. Chris. Maybe I could pay you back. If you put up the money for a studio apartment, then I'd have a place to live, and you could paint there. Don't you see? paint my portrait. What's the matter? Don't you want to paint my picture? There's something I've got to tell you, Kitty. What? I deceived you. I lied. I'm a married man, Kitty. Why didn't you tell me, Chris? You know I'm not the kind of a girl to run around with a married man, don't you? You know what you said about meeting someone? How you begin to like them? And you can't think about anybody else? You should have told me you had a wife, Chris. Yes, but I'm not in love with her, Kitty. You married her. Well, I was lonely. I, I, I couldn't stand my loneliness. Poor Chris. Well, then you're not angry with me? I suppose I ought to be, but I'm not. Not with you, Chris. I'm going to let you help me. Well, how much do you need? Five hundred dollars. $500. I could pay it back $10 a week. That's all right, Mr. Cross. But you'll have to have a co-signer. Uh, thank you. No. Property owner. Property owner? Just a formality. Uh, thank you very much. Anytime. Well, why can't an old skinflint hogarth give you a raise? 
You don't even make enough money to buy me a radio. I have to run downstairs every night to listen to the radio. The way I have to scrimp and save and you wasting money on pence. I'd like to know what you'd do without me. Poor dear Homer. If only you had a grave where I could put some flowers. Why, you couldn't even ask me to marry you. I had to put the words into your mouth. I'd have been better off a widow. The only reason I put up with you is because I'm married to you. I'm stuck. Yes, and I'm stuck too. Have you been drinking? No, I haven't. Let me spend your breath. <sighs> then what's the matter with you? Why are you shouting at me? Well, you keep blaming me for not buying you a radio. But you think I like running downstairs every night to listen to the radio? Well, why don't you buy a radio? You have money. Is insurance money? Well, I don't want a radio. You want it. I'll never touch those bonds. They're for my old age. Homer would allow that have a radio. He made a good salary. He gave me a good home. Well, you're living in the same apartment, aren't you? Yes. But it didn't smell of paint. I can't sleep with the smell of paint. And all your silly pictures cluttering up the hall. If you don't get rid of that trash, I swear I'll give it to the junk man. Adele. I will. I swear I will. <laughs> and the things you paid me. It was bad enough when you used to copy picture postcards. Well, Utrillo copies postcards, and he's considered a great painter. <laughs> now I suppose you're copying Utrillo, whatever his name is. They're getting crazier all the time. Oh, yes. I saw what you're doing. Girls. Snakes. Next thing you'll be painting women without clothes. I never saw a woman without any clothes. I should hope. The happy household hours. Just coming on, dear. I'll be right down, Dora. Mr. Cross came home late. Go ahead and eat. And then do the dishes. This is the happy household hour. Brought to you at this time by Happy Hour Bubble Sun. No soap gives you more happiness, more washing, and more suds per package than Happy Hour Bubble Sun. Ask your nearest grocer for the large economy size package today. And now for the next episode of Hilda's Hope for Happiness. As you remember, we left Hilda in the laundry. Bubble Sud, Hilda. I was, uh, I was looking for the paper. A blind? Oh. Well, uh, didn't you, uh, didn't you like the radio? It went off right in the middle of a program. I wouldn't have such a radio. Hey, uh, did you read this? Read what? Uh, this murder in Queens. A man killed his wife with a window weight, put a body in the trunk and shipped it to California. Uh, it says here... I've read the paper, thank you. He didn't get away with it, did he? He'll go to the chair, as he should. Yeah. Man hasn't got a chance with these New York detectives. Can't you put that paper down and do the dishes? Uh, Adele. You didn't mean what you said about giving my paintings away to the junk man. You'll find out. Well, uh, you won't have to. A friend of mine is taking an apartment in Greenwich Village. Uh, I'll move everything there. Well, if he's fool enough to let you do it, go ahead. The sooner the better. 
Yeah. Top floor, you'll get plenty of light. Lots of privacy. Uh, you've heard of Tony Rivera, the illustrator? He has his apartment on a three-year lease. Couldn't work anywhere else. Uh, this was his studio. The sketches on the wall are Rivera's. He'd do that with his models sometimes when he was working on a magazine cover. Some people pay a lot of money for those. Are you an artist, Miss March? Uh-huh. Where's the bedroom? Oh, this way. What's the rent, Mr. Jones? Uh, 150. Oh, there are some things that Rivera left here stored in the basement. They go with the apartment if you care to use them. Here you are. Bedroom. I don't like the wallpaper. Will they change the paper? I guess so, on a year's lease. I'll pick it out myself. Well, don't break the bag. <laughs> Hello, Lazy Legs. Oh, I heard the doorbell. <sighs> Say, is this all you've got? I'm lucky I have that left the way you were throwing it around last night. You even bought me a book, honey. You're supposed to be an actress, aren't you? Shakespeare, for Pete's sake. You know where to get more, don't you, Lazy Legs? Told me he hadn't sold any pictures for a long time. And I'm in hot for all this. Look, Kitty. I need at least a thousand dollars. Ouch! Well, you got them softened up. Now, push him around a bit. He seems to get scared when I talk about money. Listen, baby, you got him right where you want him. He's on the hook and can't get off. He can walk out, can't he? He's got a wife, hasn't he? Just drop a hint that his wife might find out about this apartment and he'll shell out fast. That's blackmail. It's only blackmail, baby. When you're dumb enough to get caught, Him. Told you I heard the doorbell. For cat's sake, get rid of him. Answer doorbell? Thought you were mad at me. Peace offering. Scotch. Thanks, honey. I didn't think you were out. It's only ten past twelve. I rang and rang downstairs and I found the door was open. Well, well, well. You're doing all right for a working girl. Don't start that again. Don't tell me he's under the sofa, too. No, bright eyes. You can come out, Johnny. All you have to do is call, funny Faye. Oh. You must have made a killing in Wall Street, Mr. Prince. Could be. 
Last time I saw Johnny, he was talking about going to Hollywood. I might try it yet. Why, well, I read in a movie magazine about a fellow who landed in Hollywood stone broke and cleaned up a million. No experience, either. All he had was looks. And he worked in a drugstore. If he worked, Johnny, he didn't look like you. Oh, you two stop fighting. I'm not fighting, baby. She just doesn't know my speed. Why are a movie actor's getting five, ten thousand a week? For what? For acting tough. For pushing girls in the face. What do they do I can't do? You're so clever, why don't you do it? I might, funny face. I might. Chris! I brought over some of my things, Kitty. I'll bring some more tomorrow. The rest on Saturday. Oh, uh, you have company. This is Millie and Johnny. Sure. You know, Millie's boyfriend. Come on, I want you to meet them. Millie, this is a friend of mine, Mr. Cross, Miss Ray. How do you do, Miss Ray? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Cross, and uh, Johnny Prince. Glad to know you, Mr. Cross. How do you do? Uh, seems to me I've seen you before somewhere. Could be. Could be, Mr. Cross. Yes, I... Uh, I just don't seem to remember. Maybe I'm mistaken. Could be. Well, I'll have to run along, Kit. I'll go with you, sweetheart. Oh, don't bother, Johnny. Well, I wouldn't think of letting you go alone, darling. You might get run over by a streetcar. Goodbye, Mr. Cross. Bye. Nice to see you. Thanks for the scotch, Millie. That's okay. Bye. So long, Kitty. So long, Johnny. Now, what's the matter, Chris? Uh, I, I don't think I like that young man she's in love with. Oh, Johnny's all right. Oh, I know he is, or he wouldn't be a friend, but uh, there's something about him that... She's crazy about him. Uh, uh, would you... Uh, would you like to see my pictures? Not yet. Come sit down, Chris. You happy? For the first time in my life. Very happy? I think of you all the time. All I want is to see you, be near you. I know I haven't any right to ask you this, but have you ever... Well, there, there must have been other men who... Just one, Chris. You still see him? I've forgotten him. Look, Kitty, if I were single, if I had no wife... But you have a wife. Yes, I know, but if she'd... Uh, well, if something would happen that would make me free, would you marry me? Oh, let's not talk about it now, dear. What I'm worried about is getting a job. Living like this, it's expensive. I don't like to ask you for anything more because, well, you say you haven't sold any pictures lately. Yes, but don't you have enough money? No, I have no idea what the problem money is for an actress, Chris. Talent doesn't count in the theater. Everything is poor. Contacts, knowing the right people. You have to get an agent. They charge plenty. Wear smart clothes. Be attractive. Oh, but Kitty, you're beautiful. Oh, Chris. Your face doesn't mean a thing. It's clothes, perfumes, making the right impression. An actress needs a thousand dollars just to get a decent wardrobe. Thousand dollars? At least. Maybe I can borrow it from Millie. Or her boyfriend, Johnny. He's got plenty of money. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, no, Kitty. Uh, no, no, not, not from Johnny. Why not? Well, uh, I'll, I'll get you the money uh, some way. Chris, you're a darling. I really believe you're in love with me. I am, Kitty. I am. <laughs> Chris, you're... You're a caveman. I, I like you to like me, but, well, there's a limit. Yes, I know. Well, I've got to go. I'm supposed to be back. Uh, I'll come here tomorrow noon, Kitty. I'll be waiting for you. I'm sorry you have to go. Bye-bye, dear. Oh. Don't forget the money. I'll get it.
I don't get it. The poor sap must be a hophead seeing snakes on the L. Imagine anyone paying money for this stuff? Say, are you sure he's not a phony? Ah, uh, he's too dumb to be a phony. You're right there. And how would he get all the money? Why, if he had to work for a living, he couldn't make $50 a week. You just don't know all right. Maybe not, but I'm going to find out about it. I kind of like this one. <laughs> Where would you find flowers like that? I wonder if I couldn't sell these. And what do I do when he asks where they are? Say so you put them in storage. You know, you've got to protect them. You can't leave valuable paintings lying around where somebody can pick them up. You'd get in trouble. Any gallery'd know his work. He tried to kiss me today. And don't think I liked it. Oh, you've been kissed before. Say, they're not even signed. Well, that doesn't matter. They'd know them. Not where I take them, baby. Johnny, I can't stand to have anybody touch me but you. Uh, I hate him when he looks at me like that. If he were mean or vicious or if he bore me out or something, I'd like him better. Oh, you don't love me or you'd understand what I mean. No? No. No? Well, maybe. Working late tonight, Mr. Cross? Oh, I'm about through, Ben. You can let me out in a minute. Yes, sir. Got. The fellow that painted those gets 50 grand for a single picture. Hey, what's the matter with you, Nick? Where'd you pick them up, over in Washington Square? The village longhairs are peddling junk like that for the price of the canvas. These weren't painted by any village longhair. That's my pawn shop, isn't it? And that snake is strictly from the Bronx. This fellow lives in Brooklyn. He's famous. Yeah, what's his name? Well, I... Look, Nick, I brought your stuff before and you never asked for any name on it. That was jewelry. Bring me some more of that and we can do business, Johnny. Take this junk back to Washington Square where you got it. Take a look at these. 
Oh, I didn't know you were a painter. I'm not. Are they any good? Well, they've got something. A certain peculiar something. But no perspective. Is that important? I should say it is. Look at my painting. Where did you buy them? I didn't buy them. I want to sell them. Or you want me to sell them on commission? How much do you think they're worth? I always start everything at 25. Then, you know, it's a hard business selling pictures. Yeah, people don't buy art nowadays. No appreciation, no taste, no perception, and no perspective. Huh? <laughs> Let me have your name and address. I'll come back later. So long. Hello, John. Hiya, Penny. Well, where'd you get that? Off, Nick. Well, what about my ring? You know how much a good diamond costs? Well, I gave you $900. But you pipe down. You've been telling me what a dope the old guy is. Maybe you're the dope. He tells you his paintings are worth a lot of money. Did you check up on his story? What's wrong with it? They're worth just 25 bucks a piece. That's what's wrong oh, with you. You're that. crazy. If I weren't a gentleman. Well, don't get sore. Well, then don't tell me I'm crazy. I tell you, the old boys are phony. His money isn't phony, is it? He could borrow dough or have it stashed away. Or even steal it. Chris Steele? Oh, jeepers, Johnny. He's not the type. He wouldn't have nerve enough to steal. Well, he didn't get it from his pictures. He may be dumb, but not about art. The day he took me to the museum, he explained how everything was done. You should have heard him. People stood around and listened. What museum? The Metropolitan. Yipe. They've got pictures there worth a million bucks. Where are you going? I'm going to make a monkey out of you, lazy legs. You can't take his pictures to the museum. Who says I can't? You know who bought them? Janeway. The Damon Janeway. Don't you know who Mr. Janeway is? Uh-uh. He's an art critic. The best authority in New York on modern art. He took one look and bought them both. I couldn't even give him my pictures, not for nothing. He wants to get hold of you. They told me to telephone him. You wait here. Huh? No, no. Man. You're the Mr. Fixit who was going to make a monkey out of poor, dopey little kitty. So you gave away two pictures for a couple of dimes, and now you can't collect the dimes. Oh, dry up. Jeepers. Now what? What am I going to tell Chris? He won't find out. The heck he won't. That Janeway's a critic. He writes for the newspaper. Ah. Golly, you got us in a spot. I told you not to do it. You're just nervous. The old guy who sold him doesn't know me from Adam. Hey, give me that drink. I can use it. Chris? Huh? He's got a key. Well, go ahead. See who it is. Hurry up. I beg your pardon, but we're looking for a man, and I'm afraid I don't know his name. Oh, and I'm afraid I can't help you. I'm sorry. Oh, look! There! These are his... Oh, there he is. 
Why did you run away from me like that, huh? Here, fifty dollars, less twenty percent. I don't know what you're talking about. But the pictures you brought me. Perhaps we'd better introduce ourselves. My name is Janeway. This is Mr. Delaro. How do you do? What is it you want? We'd like to find out who painted the pictures. You don't know? Of course they don't know. That's what we're here for. Look, if you're a friend of the painter, you'll put Mr. Delaro in touch with him. Why'd you buy those pictures if you don't know who painted them? Because they're good. Who painted them? No, Johnny, no. Oh, don't be so modest, Miss Marge. Now, you see, you got me in bed. She made me promise not to tell. That's why I made out like I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny about her painting. Never lets anyone see it. Doesn't even put her name on her pictures. And so I observed. You're an extraordinary artist, Miss Marsh. Oh, no. See, she can't stare for anybody to talk about it. She got the idea her pictures weren't any good. That's why I took those two to you, to give her confidence. I knew they were good. Now I'll take that money. I never would have guessed it was a woman. Nor I. Your work is very strong, Miss March. May we see some more of it? Sure, go ahead. Look in the studio. Thank you. You're crazy to try a thing like this. For God's sake, I thought they were cops. I know what I'm doing. They don't know from nothing. I can't fool that critic. You always wanted to be an actress. Now's your chance. You've been around the old boy long enough to pick up his lingo. Feed Janeway some of that. I'll get him in here along with you. No, no, wait! How long has she been painting? Ever since she was a kid, Mr. Janeway. Never went to art school, did she? No, she just picked it up. I guess I'm the only one who's been encouraging her, kind of helping her along. As a friend, you know, just a friend. Oh, uh, I didn't get your name. Prince. Mr. Janeway, she's uh, kind of upset. Maybe you'd go in and talk to her. I'm glad to. Well, Mr. Delaro? I wonder if Miss March would let me have all of these. Well, that depends. Uh, what's uh, in it for her? Prices will have to be built up, Mr. Prince, but... I can usually tell whether a canvas has been painted by a man or woman. But you fooled me completely, Miss March. Your work is not only original, it has a masculine force. How long does it take you to paint a picture? Sometimes a day. Sometimes a year. You can't tell. It has to grow. Of course. It's a matter of feeling. You know how... how feeling grows? It's like... like falling in love, I guess. That's a very good description. The way I look at it. Every painting, if it's any good, is... a love affair. Yeah, I quote that. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't write about me. I can see you're going to be a very hard case. Why don't you have confidence in your work? Because I can't draw. You do, all right. I just put a line around what I feel when I look at things. You're a very stimulating person to talk to. How are you two getting along? I think I'm breaking the ice. Kitty, Mr. Delaro wants to handle all your work exclusively. Is it all right? As a friend, I'd advise it. Could you come to the galleries tomorrow? What time? Any time that's convenient. How about 12 o'clock? And then lunch afterward with me. Well, I... She'll be there. I'm glad you're around, Mr. Prince, to make up her mind for us. <laughs> I can see you're tired, Miss March. This has been enough for one evening. We'd better go. Until tomorrow. Thanks, Mr. Janeway. So long. Good evening. Night, Mr. Delaro. Good night. Good night. Good night. Lazy legs. 
I don't know what you told Janeway, but you got them eaten right out of your hand. It won't stop with lunch. Well, what's the difference? If you mean... Oh, stop acting like a green kid. Let him talk about what he wants to talk about, and he won't talk about art. If I had any sense, I'd walk out on you. You haven't got any sense. Here, just like you'd sign a letter. Come on. Catherine March. Kitty. For cat's sake. Put that one back. Kitty. Chris. Oh, Kitty, I happen to be in the next. Oh, hello, Mr. Cross. I just dropped in. I thought Millie was here. See, I hope you don't mind my looking at your picture. Oh, no, uh, not at all, Mr. Prince. Fine work, that. Remarkable painting. You have a little trouble with perspective, don't you? Yes, that's one thing I never could master. Perspective. Well, I, I guess I'll have to run along. So long, Mr. Cross. If Millie drops in, tell her I'll be at Tiny's place. Uh, uh, don't bother. I'll let myself out. Has he been here long? No, oh, why? I don't like him. Oh, Johnny's all right. He's a nice fellow, Chris. Really is. I don't know why you don't like him. Well, was he the one? One what? Well, you said there was one man. Oh, for heaven's sake. Won't you ever forget that? Well, was he? No. Kitty. Go ahead and paint if you want to. I'm not going to stick around if you're going to torment me. Don't be angry. Why do you come here if you want to quarrel? I didn't ask you to come here. Oh, please, Kitty. Oh, for Pete's sake. Go and paint. Well, I can't. I, I, I can't do a thing when you're angry with me. Do you want me to go? I want you to stay here and paint. I'm sorry, Chris, but why do you torment me about something that's over and done with? Well, because I... Would you marry me? Well, you can't. Well, something might happen. What? You better not let your wife hear you talking like that. Of course I'd marry you if you were free, but you're not, so let's not talk about it. Now you go on and paint. Well, could I paint you? Well, I was going to do this myself, but... Uh, paint me, Chris. <sighs> They'll be masterpieces. I dropped over to the butcher shop like you told me to. I got a nice piece of liver. How 
long have you known Catherine March? Answer me. I don't know what you're talking about. How long have you known her? Well, now, don't get excited. Uh, let me help you off with your coat. Well, you're the one that's excited. Look at your... Get away with that knife. Do you want to cut my throat? How long have you known her? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. You've been copying her work for years. Pretending you painted those pictures out of your own head and all the time you were just copying the work of a real artist. I'll bet you're at Delarose every day making notes. Where? You know where. Delarose Art Gallery in 57th Street. They've got a window full of paintings by Catherine March. You're talking crazy. She gets $500 for a single picture. She's a genius. No wonder I used to think sometimes there was something in your work. Now I know why. If you ever do any more painting around here, I swear I'll write that woman a letter telling her you're stealing her ideas. You're a thief. Oh, God, you'd better watch out. Or next thing you were stealing his money. Not that one, honey. Della Rose asking for more fixtures. Chris just finished it. Don't mess it. Jane Lee says the new fixtures are the best things you've done. Wasn't I right about Jane Lee, Lazy Lake? Yeah, but he gets on my nerves. I've been out to dinner with him three times this week, and now he's talking about breakfast. He's getting that look in his eye. All you gotta do is keep it there. Well, it's all very well for you to say, but what about the wear and tear on my nerves? Papa will take care of Kitty. Baby's gonna have a big diamond ring, and a shiny limousine, and a penthouse. And Johnny? He goes with a penthouse. Chris. How did my pictures get into Della Rose's window? Oh, Chris. Don't be angry with me. No, I'm not angry. I just can't understand. It's not possible. Oh, excuse me, darling. I, I needed money. They were going to take the furniture back. It was humiliating. I, I couldn't ask you for more. You've been so generous. I just couldn't. I saw the pictures. To Delaro? Uh huh. You actually sold those pictures? Uh huh. Oh, I know I shouldn't have put my name on him, but <laughs> Mr. Delaro wanted to know who paid him, and I, I just couldn't give him your name. No, I can't tell him different. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> funny part is it, it didn't seem to make any difference. Yes, well, the funny part is it made a great deal of difference. If I'd brought those pictures to a man like Delaro, he wouldn't have taken them. I'm a failure, Kitty. Oh, you're a great painter, Chris. Oh. Mr. Doro said so, and so did Mr. Janeway. That is... They say I am. <laughs> well, they're going to keep on saying it. Oh, Chris! Oh, now, don't. Don't, Kitty. Now, don't cry. I'm happy. Why, it's just like a dream. Oh, Chris is so good, so kind. Well, what difference does it make whose name is on those pictures, yours or mine? Why, it's just like we were married. <laughs> Only I take your name. Well, that gives me a little authority around here. I want to paint your picture, Kitty. How about it? <laughs> Come with me.
Chapman. Hello there. Hello. Well, this is the first time I've ever agreed with you, Jane Way. Thank you. <laughs> I find the painter even more fascinating than her painting. What's she like? Mona Lisa without the smile. Something hidden. Sometimes it seems as if she were two people. I mentioned that in my notice. Would you uh, care to see it? I says he wants to see you. Who? I didn't get no name, sir. But he said he was a detective. Well, I used to be, Mr. Cross. Don't you recognize me? Oh. Oh. Quite a shock, huh? Now, don't faint, Mr. Cross. Keep your head. I'll explain everything. Well, I was in trouble at the time. I'd been collecting a little extra money from the speakeasies along the waterfront. Word got around the headquarters. I was up for investigation. One night I'm down by Brooklyn Bridge, trying to fix things up. Man runs in the speakeasy and says, a woman just jumped off the bridge. So I run out and tear off my coat, jump in. The way I felt, I'm hoping I don't come up again. You mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there I am swimming around in the dark. I had all of her hat once. Next thing I know, I'm all tired out. I heard a tugboat whistle on right down on top of me. <laughs> Comes a coal barge. So I grab a hole and climb aboard. I look down my hand. What do you think I got? Her pocketbook. That's what I grabbed a hold of when I thought it was her hat. And inside is $2,700 in folding money. Imagine anybody committing suicide with that much money. Well, the coal barge unloaded on a banana boat bound for Honduras. Well, I went with it. Yes, but if you're not dead, then I'm not really married to Adele, am I? What's it worth to you for me to keep my mouth shut and just uh, fade away? Yes, but, but if you are Adele's husband... Then... Wait a minute. I can see you need Adele. I need money. You're a cashier. It ought to be easy for you to put your hands on a couple of thousand. Oh, I, 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 I couldn't do a thing like that. You're going back to her? No. But not to do you a favor, mister. I'm clearing out for Adele's sake. And don't think you're going to get any peace of mind either. I might turn up again someday. She'd kick you out in a minute for a man like me. Uh, I'll, I'll get you some money. Now you're using your head. Yeah, but you, you'll have to wait here. I can't get it till after we close at 6 o'clock. Oh, wait, Cross. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Kitty. Hi, my Kitty. Hi. Don't forget the champagne, baby. Nice car you have, Johnny. You go fast, huh? I'd like to see any cop try to catch me. <laughs> Say, I'll give you four bits for a bucket full of that ice. Okay, Johnny. Can I borrow the ice pick? You give it back, huh? Sure, sure. Thank you. Only 200? Well, that's all I could get. Don't you think your wife's worth more than that? Well, look, I, uh, I want you to get all that's coming to you, Mr. Higgins. Now, what about the insurance money? Insurance? Yeah, $2,000 on your life. Adele collected it. It's really yours, isn't it? 
She keeps it right in her bedroom. Now, I, I wouldn't touch a penny of it, Mr. Higgins, but if you took it, it would be perfectly legal. But just how would I get it? That's easy. This is the night that she always goes out to the movies. I let you in. You take the money. I let you out. But why don't you get it? Oh, I got to be able to say that I didn't touch it. Uh, you know, Adele. What if she don't go out and I show up? Your goose is cooked, isn't it? Yes, but uh, uh, I can play it safe. <laughs> How? Well, you come along the street at 11 o'clock tonight. Mrs. Michaels. You remember Mrs. Michaels, don't you? Oh, yeah. And the neighbors. Where's the money? In there, in the bottom drawer of the chest. Okay. Give me the flag. you over on your head. How'd I know he was coming here tonight? I don't understand that. You don't understand anything. Well, why get sore at Well, what me? use are my brains if I'm tied up with a dumb clock like you? I told you to watch your step, didn't I? That's right. Blame it on me. Oh, well, why'd you keep me here tonight? I didn't want to stay. Johnny, don't talk like that. Well, it's the truth. I'm fed up with it. Johnny. That's the only thing you ever understood. I'm through with it. upon us sinners. The way of the sinner is made plain with stones, but the end thereof is the pit of hell. O oh Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Hell. 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 Millie? Yeah, Kitty. You seen Johnny? Oh, I thought he'd go to Tiny's. Was he getting tight? Oh, just a fight. Listen, he can't live without me any more than I can live without him. Said he was coming back here. To beat me up? 
Jeepers, the way that guy shoots off his mouth. Oh, you don't have to warn me. That's just the way he talks. If you were in love, you'd understand. Oh, stop it. Johnny wouldn't kill a fly. <laughs> That's love, honey. Here he is now. And has he got a bun on? Goodbye, hon. Hello, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. I heard you. to me, Kitty. It was him, wasn't it? Can I help it if I'm in love? No, just an infatuation. You, you couldn't love a man like that, Kitty. He's evil. He wouldn't let you alone, isn't that right? I wanted to kill him. Well, that's wrong. Why'd you come here? To ask you to marry me. What about your wife? I haven't any wife. That's finished. For cat's sake, you My husband do... turned up. I'm free. Oh, now. <laughs> Don't cry, Kitty. I know how you feel, but that's all over now. We all make mistakes. I don't care what's happened. I... I can marry you now. I... I want you to be my wife. We, we'll go away together. Way far off, so... You can forget this other man. Don't cry, Kitty. Please don't cry. <laughs> I'm not crying, you fool. I'm laughing. Kitty. <laughs> oh, you idiot. How can a man be so dumb? Kitty. <laughs> I've wanted to laugh in your face ever since I first met you. You're old and ugly and I'm sick of you. Sick, sick, sick. Kitty, for heaven's sake. You killed Johnny? I'd like to see you try. Why, he'd break every bone in your body. He's a man. You want to marry me? You? Get out of here. Get out. Get away from me. Chris. Chris, get away from me. Chris. Chris. <laughs> Johnny, you kill somebody. Wait a minute. What made you do it, Chris? When these officers called me, I, I wouldn't believe it. We were tipped off on the telephone. 
By a man named Higgins. I checked the cash before you came in. Do you know how much is missing? Over $1,200. We'll take him along. You can make the complaint, Mr. Hogarth. Hold on, boys. I just can't do it. But, Mr. Hogarth... You know, you've done your duty, and I'm obliged to you. There's a box of cigars on the table. Take them along with you. Okay, Mr. Hogarth. It's up to you. Chris, it was a woman, wasn't it? I thought so. I'm not going to put you in jail, Chris. Only, of course, you're through. Drive. You tried to get away in the murdered girl's car. That was my car. This is yours, too. It's got your initials on it. But it's her blood. His $140 was taken out of her pocketbook. It was mine. It's her diamond ring. Worth, oh, five or $600. Uh, <laughs> you guys know a lot, don't you? It cost $1,200. Here's her personal jewelry. Not much value, but he cleaned her out. Well, why wouldn't I? She didn't have any more use for it, did she? Listen, you guys, I want a lawyer. I'm a citizen. I got my rights. This belongs to you, too, huh? It's got your fingerprints on it. Well, naturally, I picked it up. How did I know she was dead? I thought she was asleep at first. didn't paint those pictures. Old Cross isn't as dumb as he looks. He painted them. The accused brought me two pictures. He told me Miss March painted them. In my expert opinion, there's no doubt about it. She was a very great artist. She told me she was an artist when she rented the studio. He was with her. I didn't like him then and I don't like him now. Yeah, he was mean when he was drunk. He said he was going to fix it when he left my place around 2 a.m. That's when I tell him, you look out, Johnny, you kill somebody. So he kills her with my ice pick. And then I heard her say hello, Johnny, before she hung up. He was there, all right. Well, what I don't understand is this talk about her being an artist. I never saw her paint. That was one of her peculiar traits. She never let anyone see her paint. I've compared her handwriting with her signature. There's no question. Mr. Cross paint? <laughs> the only copy to work. He's a thief. He stole from me, from his employer, from Catherine March. Uh, my wife, uh, I mean, my former wife is correct. I really can't paint. Uh, my copies were so bad, I had to destroy them. For God's sake, he's lying! Hello, Mr. Cross. Oh, Tom Crocker, Evening Globe. Oh, yes, Tom Crocker. Uh, Joe Williams, Morning World. Yeah. Conway's with the ledger. Hi. Yeah. Cigarette? Well, thanks. Going to Sing Sing? Yeah. I don't like to cover executions, but I must say this is one I don't mind. You sure cooked Johnny's goose, Mr. Cross, when you testified you couldn't paint. Nobody cooked Johnny's goose except Johnny. The way he shot off his mouth. He was a dead pigeon when he dragged the girl's name through the mud. I watched the jury. If he kept his trap shut, he might have got off with his life. Sure, the evidence was only circumstantial. What do you mean? Got a fair trial, didn't he? Yeah, but there's always a doubt. I suppose you fellas are going to say it was a miscarriage of justice. That someone is getting away with murder. Not me. There's no such thing. Mr. Cross, nobody gets away with murder. How's that? Oh, don't get him started. You have talk your ear off. That's his pet theory. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead and laugh all you like. But no one escapes punishment. I figure we have a little courtroom right in here. Judge, jury, and executioner. I don't get it. Well, murder never solves anything. How about it, fellas? You've covered lots of trials. 
I'm sorry, but I have to admit you're right. The problem just moves in here where it can never get out. Right here in solitary. So what? So you go right on punishing yourself. You can't get away with it. Never. Now that doesn't make any sense. Well, you haven't seen as much of murder as I have, Mr. Cross. I'd rather have the judge give me the work than have to do it to myself. What time they throw the switch? 11 o'clock.
It's all right, old man. It's all right. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. out of this park? You know the mayor's orders. Get on down to the Bowery where you belong. Come on, come on. Who's that, Rick? He's got a crazy idea. He killed a couple of people five or six years ago. Can't get it off his mind. Always trying to give himself up. Wants to be tried and executed. You know these nuts. Thank you. 